Welcome to part 18 of the Excel 250 restoration. This was supposed to be the second last uh, video with, of course, 19 being the finish, uh, dressing it with new seat cover and you know, putting all the grips and levers, that sort of thing on, and riding away into the sunset. But it all went tits up and <laughs> it developed a shock and knock. And we had, well, I'm not going to tell you. You watch the video and see what you reckon. So to pop this throttle assembly back together, it could do with a new sleeve, remember? Because it is a bit scratched up. Um, again, really easy stuff to replace later if you want to. That is the wrong way. That's going to go that way, and it's going to go that way. So I sort of go like this. I'll get that all sort of figured out once I sort of put it on. That's sort of got to go under there, and then wrap around the throttle thing. So we'll go and get that, and I don't know what I've done with that. Oh, it's here, and these are all the plated screws, so it look brand new. Um, the issue is that doesn't look new, and you can see it's a bit chewed up there. Um, having said that, it does rotate quite freely, and I want it to rotate freely, that's most important. How the hell does that go? Oh, I see, it goes that way. Oh, who's a dumbass? All right, so... Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's good. We can live with that. So, I guess we've just got to sort of wrap that around. I might put a bit of grease in there. I think he's going to need a new one of these, to be honest with you, but I think for getting it going. And the other thing I don't like is the, um, the fuel cap. The fuel cap looks terrible. Crap. Yeah, I've just done that. Um, new old stockers that look beautiful are 140 bucks, and it's just not worth spending that on this. I think we're sort of maxed out what the budget's going to let us spend. So I'll naturally put a bit of grease on here, but I think I'm just going to want to snap back there. That's cool. I think I'll just put a bit of grease in there, and then we can sort of put that on. Over the bars, like that, and screw it down. And I think that's going to be good. I just want to get the throttle hooked up so I can get the spacing on these switches right. Where do they go to? They go in from the top, which is quite good because then we get to see them. Okay. Alright. I'm just going to hold it there for now. It's just a matter of sifting through our plated stuff and seeing what goes where. There we go. Now, how far in does that go? Is that tight? Okay, so it's about there. And we can just do them up. I've used engine 8mm fasteners there because they look better. And I had some left over. They were a length that I didn't need for the engine. But they're lovely and discreet, but also they kind of pop a bit. I might go down a bit and just imagine the angle. I haven't got the grips yet. Dave has to get them because I want him to choose because there's a gazillion types of grips around. And I want him to be the one who chooses them and just nip him up. You've got to watch these because the other's got strip threads on it. Both will. Both of them do, which is a ruddy pain. So you can't overdo them. Can't over tighten those. Now, I think we'll connect the throttle up. So at least we've got a throttle. So when we start it, we can do something about the revs. Things to mention I didn't show in the other video is we've got convoluted tubing in here underneath that fabric wrap to give it a little bit of um, sort of strength around the headstock. The other thing is the clutch cable I thought was too short. We might get away with the instrument's got to go there. So. I think that's in the wrong spot there. The throttle's nicely hooked up. I've got to tighten that against the body of the throttle. And if we operate the throttle, it returns beautifully. I don't like sticky throttles or slow releasing ones. Front brakes on, there's a clamp, whoops, that sort of goes in there to hold it against the fork. I saw that clamp before, I haven't cleaned it up yet. Can't find my funnel, so I made this out of a soft drink lid with a tube in it. And I've got to put a bit of oil in here and 
going to start kicking it over relatively soon. Oh, this is going to take a long time. I'm going to be here for about a month. I'm going to try and get it on its point of balance. Virtually at the top of that part. Once it pumps around the engine, it's going to need topping up. But that's enough to kick it over with. I guess I'm going to do the valve clearances now, and I've been dreading that. I hate doing that sort of thing. And of course, we just keep finding little bits and pieces to put on. There's a cable retainer for the front brake cable sort of hanging right out. There's a choke cable here. The same person that designed the brake for this must have done the rear shocks because it sort of hangs out on an angle there. And the cluster comes out and it's sort of out on this angle. I like things straight. So I don't know why they've done it like that. It looks a bit weird, but that's all right. That's what Honda did, so that's what we're going to do. When you mask up stuff like this, always fold the end of it down so you can just find the end of it and unroll it. Um, if you don't do that, you can just sort of find yourself picking it off and it becomes messy. I'll just get a bit of scotch bright and clean that up a bit. And then we can stick the choke cable in. And then once we're timed it, I reckon we stick petrol in to a dummy tank. Because I'm still not finished with the other tank. And see how that goes. This sort of roots down there. Um, how's this go? That screws on. Cool. Very cool. Well, sort of cool. If you like that angle, I think it looks dumb, but anyway. You can see what I'm doing. Here's your choke. I'm just going to wrap that cable in there. If I get my hand around it, hang on. And then feed him in. There's a bloody great big fly in here, too. I hate those things. They're wasted up oxygen. Um. Where's my screwdriver? Here's my screwdriver. Let me just trap that under there. And pull the choke on. And I can tighten up that nut and it will stay. A few other bits and pieces. This is the gasket that goes around the air cleaner um, lid on the back of the side cover, if you like. It's all horrible and dirty. We can sort of try and clean this bit by bit, but it'll end up stretching it. I'm just going to roll it up. Um, just sort of tie it up like that. And I've got a hairspray lid. These ones don't have a hole in them like most of the rattle cans you buy. I'll just let that soak in water. It's not sitting in too well. The Volvo drive belts used to come in boxes. And they used to come, um, and they'd be twirled up like this when you bought them. That's what it reminds me of. It was years ago when I was at White House. There you go, that'll sit in there. So I'm just going to put water in there. And, what do we say? Bob's your uncle, that's right. <laughs> it's time to do more on the Excel. I've got um, a couple of issues. Oh, kicking everything. Side cover wouldn't bolt on properly here, so I've had to run a six millimeter tap through the front mounting hole there. I think there's a sort of a, a um, integral steel insert in the plastic. Um, also, I've had trouble with this, which I'd never noticed, the bolt is actually broken off inside here, so I've drilled it through with that. I don't even know what size it is, but the one we need ultimately is a 4.5 mil, I think. I could be wrong with that. Six mil thread, I got a cut. Just a minute. Yeah, it was a three mil. Um, these are chicken feed. I've got two of these, a magic one, an imperial one. They're nothing on eBay. They're like five bucks or something. It's a drill gauge. Great for fabrication too. You can just see what size everything is. Much easier than pulling out your burners or your mic. I'll just pop it through each hole and then I know. Um, so I'm just really doing loose ends, like not putting drill bits in properly. Uh, don't do that. Maybe I should put a lubricant on. Anyway, keep going. Put a nice hole on the top of his cubby, that wouldn't be good, would it? We have to get rid of all that swarf too, because you don't get rid of that, it's going to turn rusty and look, put a lot of little brown dots all over everything, particularly the engine case, which is all painted. So that's all got to be blown out. With compressed air would be better than my mouth. But anyway, I'm just going to run a tap through that. And then I can call that job done, put a screw there, and then when the tank's ready to go on, 
which I'm really hoping is this afternoon, then we are good. Wait, is um, if they feel bindy, it doesn't even look straight either. If they feel a bit bindy, lubricate them because if you break, this is a tap I've had since I was 15 as well. I think I mentioned that tap and dice that my brother bought me when I was a kid. I had a Honda, well, a CB350. I had two of them actually, I had a twin and a four. And um, so this has been around for ages. Now, if it feels like it's going to snap, just stop what you're doing for God's sake. And keep turning it around as well because if you don't and there's an issue you're in so much crap because getting it out is not only impossible it's just horrible horrible things to try and get out taps because they're so hard and brittle so i'm just popping a bit of it's not proper cutting fluid and you know what i'm gonna leave it there because that feels a little bit like it's going to stick there so we don't have to have a long bolt in here just a reasonably short one which will um, just hold the back of the tank in place the seat will hold it there anyway but i just want to put the right sort of fastener back just because it looks good and it's what honda intended so not much in the way of bits left uh, we've got a couple of mirrors here and we can clean those up we're not going to paint them or anything we're just going to clean those up they're actually a really good nick and they're going to be fine without being painted so that's cool i'm not going to do that a um, bit of stuff on the glitter. We've got a bit of stuff on these, um, just a bit of tie shine or whatever, silicon based stuff to protect the cables at the handbrake, at the, what do you call it, hand grips. There's the horn, I've got to figure where to put that. It's not, I can't remember where the original one was. That's a newie, and I made up a shim, which is for the front brake cable. The other thing I've got to do, just wait on recording. Just give me two secs. Um, this thing here doesn't work with the ignition key and that does work on the steering lock and the ignition lock itself So we'll get that done get that recoded the cover's missing, but that just unscrews that needs a good cleanup I don't think that's gonna need well, I might need painting. I'm not sure. We'll see how that turns out These have got snap-off type six millimeter bolts where the head comes off when you tighten that Like the ignition lock on a Ford Falcon. So Might just put counters on ones there. I'm not sure and of course then we've got a little list, got to put that on again, bit of tie shine, make it look good. And just do this. Whoops, 185 to 195 cc's of Honda ATF in the fork. So we've got some fork oil here. There should be enough in there. Um, and just instrument wiring and warning lights. And I think we're pretty much out of it. One thing we do need to do, that's the other combination switch that I painted, is the threads are knackered. So I'm going to fill, and there's a good switch. I'm going to fill in with Araldite, let it dry and harden properly drill them and re-tap them and then that'll fix that up so aside from that we're good right, so i've got this thick black stuff isn't it really thin black it's 15 amp but it's actually got a just a standard size conductor but it's quite a thick wire i need to run two black wires from this block connector in here um for the rear indicators so there's the orange and the blue one I can run one up here. Where does the indicator go? Oh, it goes right back there. And also on the other side. So I might just tie them off, just have them there. I can't remember which is right and which is left though, so I'll just, I'll, I'll check that out. And sew them in. I'm just doing these valve clearances, and I'll put the camera where my friggin' light is. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a second. And these don't have a screw. If they were screwed in, I reckon a tiny bit more. I reckon if they were screwed in, they'd be easier. They've got no bloody focus. Hang on, what's going on here? Oh, here we go. They all sound good, man. Yep. This stuff all clearance, though. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll put the little rocket cover things on. And then uh, see if we've got some spark, eh? Mm. Just give it a kick. That's off. Runs in the middle. Oh, runs in the middle. So we're off either side. Yeah, just give it. Just give it a kick. All right. So stop it. We haven't got anything. All right. Ignition's on. Give it a kick again. Yeah. We're cool. Yeah. We've got spark. Turn it. Nice. Turn it. Yeah. Kick it again. That'll work. That'll work. Nice. 
just make sure it's She's gonna work. go, hey? Yeah, let's try it now. The moment we got the fuel tank on, got it plumbed up, valve clearance is done. How can we stick juice in? And you can do that. I don't want to spill it. Has it got a spout thing on it? It has, but it's still going to spill, I reckon. Are you ticklish? <laughs> I'm not sure it's not leaking too. It didn't leak with a two-stroke in it. But, um, anyway. It was methanol I was supposed to get, wasn't it? No. We've got a, um, carb the overflow leak. Pete just ran off to get the good old fire extinguisher. That's right, because we don't give a rat's about Dave's bikes, but we do care about the cars in here. You want to do the honest? No, you can. Give it some choco. Is that run in the middle? Yep. Right. Let me just take the um, decompressor off. Sounds like it's hitting. It's going to be hitting all day. I don't know. It's not the bloody... Listen up around the head. I don't think it's the hit, the piston hitting. I was hoping it would be oil pressure, but that doesn't seem to have alleviated it. Not good. Did you like the way it ran though? Yeah, it ran beautifully. Do you like the iron filings and the oil? Uh, <laughs> you know, probably not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> oh. So we put it together and it started beautifully. Oh, well, you heard the noise. And that comes down to my workmanship. Not necessarily, Pete. I don't mind. I've had a lot of success. And now I've made myself a few iron filings. <laughs> With someone else's bike? No, that's good. It beds in the seals and stuff. Yeah, it does. It, it, it takes that glazing off the board that we just had home. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you've got to say, well, it's someone else's so we don't give it to us. <laughs> yeah, that's tight. I didn't warn you. Don't forget the stand comes off. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'm kidding. <laughs> Here. Pete's grown some extra arms here. That's it. Grown some extra skills too. You know the metal we put in the paint? We've got it in the oil now. <laughs> I thought you put that somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I thought it would look good. You get that lovely shimmer. And we all like shimmery oil. <laughs> ah, it's all good. We'll, we'll sort it out. It's not the end of the world. No, I don't think so. Friggin' ideal, but this thing had a sweat at the bottom anyway, a bit of an oil leak down the bottom, right? Down the bottom, and this had to come off anyway, so we just figured we'll just unzip it here and have a bit of a look, see if we can find anything. And uh, hopefully, we can see something fairly obvious, like something hitting or whatever. I measured and measured the piston clearance. And I reckon that's alright, but it sounds up here at the bottom, just in there somewhere. It, it also sounded noisy at the top, but noises go through metal. Speaking of bottoms, one of the guys commented that his wife thought I had a good bottom. They did, yes. That's one thing that Kate says about me, you might have a gut, but you've got a good bottom. Does she say that? Yep. I don't think Susie's ever said that about me, because I haven't even got an ass. Oh, okay. Here we go. Do I have to take the sprocket off? Shouldn't have to, I think it goes straight past. Okay, I just don't want to rip this gasket, I'm paranoid about that, so I'm just going to get my lights, so I'll turn this off for a second. Yeah, well that wasn't very good. I measured the clearance between the piston and valve um, without a head gasket and it hit, and put it back together and it didn't hit, but obviously I didn't do it well, because it is still hitting, which is a bit of a problem. So, there's a couple of ways you can do that. We can gang up gaskets underneath the barrel, underneath the cylinder, to effectively lower the compression height and that will clear. I don't like doing that. 
because if you use two or more gaskets underneath the base of the cylinder, you're going to end up, over time, they're going to compress and become a little bit unstable, and you're going to pop heat gaskets. I don't reckon that's the way to do it. Fly cutting the piston is one way, which is when you take a bit of material off. Um, I watched Musty One. He had a SL125, I think, and he had the same problem. His, inadvertently, didn't sound nearly as bad as this. His didn't sound as bad at all. Um, but when he took the head off, the inlet mark on the piston was mashed in where this one's not. It's just showing evidence of hitting, which surprises me. Maybe that's down to audio or whatever. I'm not sure. But he ended up putting two gaskets in the bottom and then he, he ground a bit off the top and he got around it that way. Um, and that's cool. The other thing with it, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Oh, um, oh, that's it. One guy I spoke to, or the guy Dave spoke to, the owner of the bike, said these things clear a lot. But I've seen three of these that hit. The he got another he got another parts bike. So that was all three of them. I think no, two of them. Were, two of them were hitting. Two. Of them. Or has he got a foot? Look, I don't know. He, he's, we've seen three pistons that are smacked in the top. We've got three pistons that have been hit in the top. Now, this is made from two different engines. And what I'm wondering is if it's been skimmed, if the head's been skimmed. These have shoestring clearance. And if that's been skimmed, they're going to hit because there's very, very little room on them. Now, I can see, see it. But the problem with that is I don't know what the original spec is because I can't find it. I don't know what the chamber volume of these things is. That'll tell me if it's been skimmed. There's a measurement you can take from the deck um, to the sort of rail, the valve, the cam box rail to the um, cylinder head surface. But I don't want to do that. I want to find out exactly what the CC chamber is or what the compression chamber is. So I'm at a bit of a loss. So what I've done is I've made a 40 thousandths, if you like, uh, copper shim and here it is here and I couldn't do it on a machine our flatbed um, what do you call it laser cutter at work well I only do sheet stock and it packed up so they got a new one it's not been set up yet so I have to do this all by hand um, out of copper and I wanted to do copper because I, if you do mild steel it's going to rust on the edge and look terrible so either side of that will be a thin gasket and that's going to be more stable than just ganging gaskets on top of each other so I think that's the way to go at least I'm hoping it is because every time you pull this out or pull it down, you're up for head gaskets and all that sort of stuff and it's a pain. I don't want to have to do it again. So that's going to give it 40 thousandths clearance, which is going to lower the compression ratio, but I don't care as long as it lowers it to a point where it's not going to hit because we can't do anything else. So the other thing I'm going to do is the balance shaft chain is very slack. I didn't split the cases on this one, but there's a little mod we can do on the spline for the adjuster on the balance chain where we can move it up a spline. And I'm going to do that to tighten that chain up. And um, the other thing which I found on it was the, um, oh, what was it? The primary drive gear from the crank that goes onto the clutch basket was around the wrong way. I don't remember taking that off. In fact, I don't think I did. Um, and it's champered on one side, so I think that's where our problem is. So we've got the parts now, and it's time to put it back together. I don't know how clearly you can see this. Here's our balance shaft. There is a dot there that corresponds with there. It's on a spline, so I can withdraw that. But we must get that back in the right order. Now, one of the issues with this, I'm just gonna pop that over here for a moment. One of the issues is the adjustment is right out. <laughs> I'm gonna have the right size socket, just a moment. So if we back this off, you can see that actually moves the shaft back and forward. And so what we need to do is we need to take that circle about and try and move it up a spline. Not sure how easy that's going to be. I'm just going to unhook that spring for a moment. Let's put it over here. And can I take that off? I don't think I can. Hang on a sec, I haven't done this before. I just want to have a look secret to it that's at the end of its adjustment but what we can do is we can move it up a spline so it's got more adjustment so that's where it was I'm just going to pop it back in and this might alleviate a bit of the 
<clears throat> oh, sorry, a couple of the issues we had with the timing chain knocking around. That's it there. There's a needle roller goes in. And so that's the adjustment there. Now on full adjustment that way, we're still flopping around. If I pull that off, move it to there, we've got scarce things. Oh yeah, we've got, it's a lot tighter. It is tighter. That's cool. It's not a heap tighter, but it is a bit tighter. It's a heck of a lot tighter than that. So I think what we're going to do is put it like that. And that'll give us that just that little bit of extra we need. Give it some oil. Stick my finger around the back. And this little guy should drop in, which it does. You can see this. There's a circlet there, down there, and there's this little keeper. And that's what the back of the needle roller runs on to stop it chafing out against the teeth on that circlip. So we need to be very careful when we put this together. I probably shouldn't have taken that shaft out. It's got two flats either side that are going to go. God, what a bastard. They're going to go either side of that. So let's push that down onto there and that will protect the needle roller from coming gutter when we put the shaft in which we've oiled up or when we put this carrier in, hang on a second let me just use both hands did a done thing, there we go I'm just going to make sure that is in position down there and then that needle roller goes over there that's it's flush so that's right the way it is now. So from there we can put that in. Stick the spring over. I think the spring goes to there. I'll double check that. I can just sit there for now. I'll work that out later. And the spring, which is there, goes maybe like that. And then that will, with adjustment, it should snap shut. So, so that's as far back as we can go. Okay, so we've got a shim washer. And we've got a flashlight, which has a dot, which is facing up. And this little guy here, which has a dot that's facing up. So that has to go like that. Hang on, let me just push him through. That should line up with that, which looks about right. So then we just put this circle pot on, which is going to be a pain in the neck because my plies are shocking. I'm just going to wipe this off. I'm not going to show the assembly again because I've been through all that before. Um, but I do want to mention how I've done some of the repairs on it, or the pre preventative type repairs, and what we're sort of looking out for. Uh, in terms of reassembly and trying to ensure we don't get any issues again. One of the things on these XLs, 750, 70 in the head, is have this oil restrictor here. Now, what happens, oil comes up through here, no it doesn't, it comes up through here, travels along that gallery and then up into the cylinder head. So when we put the gasket on, they correspond with those holes. So if it looks like it's not going to correspond, it's wrong. Get the, I'll get the dowels first, just a moment. So I've got one there, I think. And one there. And then we've got this gasket that goes on. Like that. And you can see, I'm just going to move the piston a bit. You can see that restrictor is held in by the head and on the base of the barrel it has a bridge there and that bridge allows the oil to go past the ledge of there and back into this gallery here so what we need to do or what we needed to do is make our spacer accommodate that because this is in place of where the base of the barrel would normally be so that would go like that 
so the oil can travel up there. I might even elongate that a little bit. And then we have another gasket over the top, in which case that part of it is redundant because it's already traveling up and then over and through there. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to modify this a little bit. Just allow a little bit more clearance there. So I'll try that. Oops, that goes that way. And that's fine. That's going to be good. So then we can stick this on. Bearing in mind that I can travel up through there. And we don't have an issue because we've still got that bridge at the base of the barrel. So it's just going to mean that it is a little bit taller but the oil can still get out it's restricted by that little thing but that's how it's going to look that's our sandwich there so from the side it should look fairly good shouldn't have too much so i'm just going to put the barrel on now and we'll see where it gets us oh gee so if i've done my homework properly they'll line up or not yeah that's in that's standard where the heck did that socket go I work in the most cramped garage, but no idea how tight this is. And it's um, a real pain. Right, so the barrel's on. I'm not going to tighten these up properly until I've got the head torqued down, if you know what I mean. You can still see a bit of it there, but the exhaust will cover that. It's not too bad. It's not great, you know what I mean, but it's not too bad. So what I want to look at, look at now is the primary drive gear because I think that was wrong too. There's a few things that were wrong on this when I pulled it apart. A couple of things. As you remember, when we took this guide out, that sort of sits like that. No, it sits like that. This has a slide in it, and it was facing in that way. And that's the wrong way. It has to go in from the back. Like that. Somehow. Like that. So that effectively shims it out from the side of the gearbox. Or casing, whatever you want to call it. And then the bolt goes through. Now, that was wrong when I pulled the thing apart. And it did worry me. Because the moment you see stuff like that, you know someone else has been screwing around. And they've not read a manual or something's not right with it. So, I'm just going to nip this up. And I'll drop the chain in. And I'll show you something else. Once I've got the chain in, we'll pop our beautiful new old stock guide in that stabs down into that, like so. And the thing that I'm worried about was this. This is the primary drive gear, because the gearbox is all independent at the moment. Um, this is the thing that drives from the crankshaft onto the gearbox, and it's been all chewed up, and I think that's where our problem was. Um, or at least I think it was. The thing that alarms me about this is it was definitely the wrong way. So that has to go with the shaft of pace in. And there's, a little drive dog there for the advance mechanism. So that needs to go like that. And that sort of ties the whole engine gearbox together, which I can't really do much about because I've got that chain hanging, but that was the wrong way, the wrong way around as well. So there's a good chance that was giving us trouble. So we have to keep that facing out and then stick the advance on. I think there's a, a pin under here as well. I'll just put that there. Yeah, there's a little pin in there and there's that little pin tool. So we're going to get that. And this can only go one way because that little pin is a driving dog for that. So that will go just like that. And that's your advance there. And then we have to zap that up or at least torque it up. And that will go like that. And then hopefully that is the conclusion of our BS dramas under here. <laughs> I certainly, oh, hang on a sec, we need to put that in. We can't forget to put this in either. That's a little oiler that goes through the chain. And the little thing on the side of the case plugs into it. That carries oil. That's something we don't want to miss out on. So once that's done, I'm not going to, I'm going to tighten that up. I'm going to put the covers on. You don't need to see any of that. If there's anything else I need to mention, then I'll stop and uh, talk about it then. But 
So that's all good. We've got everything ready to go. That's gear bit, uh, what do you call it? Clutch actuator rods in, the shim is on the Kickstarter. That's all moving freely. This gear's the right way around. That's the right way around there. And we've got very little slack in the balance shaft chain because we've made that modification, that adjustment. So that's going to be absolutely fine. So one of the other problems we had was fuel was leaking out of the overflow. Um, it'll be one of two things, float level, which I'm pretty sure I checked, and needle and seat. Now I've got the needle and seat out of another one. I'm not the foggiest if you can see that. But it's got a ring around it, so that's knackered. So we have a new one. So the first thing we've got to do is whip it out. We're talking about the needle and seat. Not the other thing. And have a bit of a look. I'm not sure if I filmed any of this. Oops, camera's in the way. So we'll just take that off. And it's all clean in there, I know it's clean in there. But if it's not clean in there, it's because of reasons that I don't know. And, oh, we've got the leakage. Hey, we have the leakage. See, it's clean, nice. And we will drain that into a rag because we should. There we go. A few bits of stuff in there, but what do you do, hey? And of course with these, it's got a little hat there, and that tube from the bowl flows up into there. We just take that needle out there with an awl or a scriber. Hang it about a minute. This sort of thing is pretty easy. We can also see if the float has sunk, which I doubt because fuel wasn't long enough, wouldn't have thought. You're not missing nice and light. And there's the needle there. So let me have a look with my rubbish eyesight. And oddly enough, oh, it's got a ring in it. Yeah, it's got wear. Yes, that is definitely worn. So we'll take that out. On the float is a tongue. So rather than rip this open, and then watching our needle and see it disappear into oblivion, I'm just going to cut that off and extract a new one, which is here. Oh, that's just perfect, which it should be. These have a shock absorber in them too. If you look here, there's a spring-loaded member there. You see that? I'm not sure if you can see that. Right, so that would go, hang off the bottom of that. Somehow. Like that. And then we drop it in. And then it looks hunky dory. Because now we've got to put this pin in. And the pin is going to go through here. And then we're going to measure for. Is it 14 and a half mil? I can't remember. We're going to do it to that anyway. Hang on. I think it's 14 and a half mil. I think we've already done this. 15. I think it's from the front edge. That's right on. What if it's from the back edge? That's about 17. I'm going to take it from there. We're good. So then we just reassemble it, which is putting. Oh, that hat. We've got to put this hat in. So that would go that way. Is that right? No, it's not. It goes that way. And that little tube which is the overflow tube, goes down the front there, like that, somehow. Ta -da. See? Is that good? And then, we're good, yeah, that's all fine. I'll have to double check, so I'm going to take it off again. It's easy with the head off, too. You can just sort of slide the head up next to it and then sort of strap it on, if you know what I mean. So then we can just zip it up again. I'm just going to strap this back onto the bike, and... We can then, I might put the head on, and I don't think I need to put the camera on for that because we've already seen all that stuff. Just getting ready to put this alternator cover on. This is a tip I got from a viewer who, is this the right one, yeah? Who, um, I was talking about how unwieldy the permatex, the, yeah, permatex could be on its brush, and I only wanted a hint of this. And it's really, really easy just to go around and put it on with a Q-tip, or cotton bud, whatever you want to call it. But I'm only going to go up halfway, because this is just preventative. Because there was a sweat there before. 
So now I get the gasket and stick it over. Actually, I'm going to have to put that on the engine just a minute. That is. Got a knock though. Just a minute. Getting a little bit warm, so I've popped the um, tank off. I'm just looking in here for oil. Can you see? Yeah, there's oil there. So that's the main thing. I just wanted to check that because I did mess around with the um, way it gets into oil upstairs. Still sounds a bit noisy to me. Um, I'm going to put that top mount on too. It, it's warm. It's warming up very quickly. I'm not sure I like that. That could just be friction from new rings and all that sort of stuff. Now we're getting oil into the overhead gear, which is great. What else have we got? We had a leak there last time. And that's dry as a bone, that's cool. So a lot of the issues we had, under there, it's dry. We had a, a small leak here, underneath the crankcase. We had a leak there. They've been rectified. Where the spacer is under here, it doesn't appear to be leaking there either. That's a good thing. It's just clattery, that's all. Valve clearance is done. I just don't know enough about these things to really know what's what's good, you know, what's acceptable for, in terms of noise. I don't think, being air-cooled, they're going to be noisier than water-cooled anyway. But I just wish I knew a bit more about them. It's all looking good. So, I don't know. I don't know whether to be happy or not. <laughs> I've got no idea. You know, if this was a car, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. Don't run away with the assumption that bikes are easier than cars, I'll tell you now, they're not. So, um, I guess we'll just, yeah, suck it and see. There should only be one left after this. I'm going to do some homework and... Yeah, I might go and try and find another Excel and start it up and listen to it. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just wish I knew more about them. Anyway, look, at the end of the day, there shouldn't be one left after this unless there's something catastrophic. And that is reassembling the whole thing. And putting all the headlight and the grips and the levers and the speedo. Do that up, put the seat cover on. There's a whole lot of um, stuff here for it. So that's it for part 18. It's still got a noise. I'm not happy with it. It's going to have to come apart again. I'm not going to show it because you've seen it all before inside the engine, this sort of thing. Hoping it's not a bent rod, anything like that. That would suck. I mean, it sucks as it is, but um, yeah, I think we're going to be pulling it apart again. I'll show whatever causes the issue. Um, I'll show it just in a brief little excerpt. So the next video won't be on this because there's some more investigative stuff. Dave doesn't know yet. He's on a weekend's holiday. So I haven't told him. He gave me all the bits and I've got indicators over there, mirrors, all the finishing stuff. So he's going to be gutted when he finds this out. But um, that's it by the time you see it. <laughs> he's already going to know. But mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where we're going to go with it. So look, I think what we'll do, the next video we'll do something different um, to keep the momentum going. And we'll revisit this and I'll show what the issue ended up being. And the last chapter you might have to wait a few weeks for uh, until it's all nutted out. So look, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a bit of an anti-climax, but when you restore stuff, this happens. We've got a bike that's made from three different motorcycles there. And there's aftermarket in there too. And when you mix all those things together, sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to. It's bad for me because I have a lot of success with engines normally. Um, this is a setback. I don't like publishing the fact that 
that's not working <laughs> properly, but that happens. That's just it. That happens to the best of us. So stay tuned. I'll get back to you when I know what the answers are. See you later.